Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Labatt Coaches Show. Dylan Clark, as always, joined by head coach of the Thunderbirds, Garrett Rutledge. Coach, uh, another weekend in the books, and not a bad one by any metrics. Seven out of a nine possible points against the Danbury Hattricks. Uh, Got to be a lot to be excited about over this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. When you get to uh, two out of three wins there, it's uh, always makes things uh, much better coming to the rink uh, first thing in the week. And it was a team that you had kind of had your sights set on um, the last time we spoke. Uh, Dan Barry uh, had been on a nine-game winning streak that recently snapped, um, and it, it was just a, a weekend where a lot of things went right, and I think a lot of hard work paid off for you guys. Yeah, finally we got a full roster and a few guys back of our top guys from that's been out on injury for a while, so it was good to see. It was good to be back at home. Um, and like I said, the boys came out to play, and obviously we got the results we were looking for. And one of those guys uh, getting back into the lineup, Cameron Dimmitt, um, had tried to come back about midway through November from that lower body injury, and back in full swing now, played all three games this weekend, um, two goals and an assist on the weekend, and it was something we talked about when you can have Cameron Dimmitt on your third line. That's a pretty deep team. Oh, yeah, front. absolutely. I wouldn't even consider it a third line. I just 1A, 1B, 1C, whoever was going that night is basically – what our lines are so bringing him back in the lineup just his leadership and everything he's been around the league a long time so obviously you can see the result and the impact he has on the game and guys that have been around the league a long time uh yuri peshtuka certainly one of them uh with a pair of assists on sunday night's game 200 points in his fphl career and just what does it mean to have a guy with that kind of experience and that wealth of knowledge on the back end oh actually well like credit to yuri he's actually a forward so um to be able to play at this level and transition from the forward back to a defenseman and still contribute offensively and be in leadership and, and being an anchor back there for us just shows his skill set and how good of a hockey player he is so yuri's one of those guys that comes to the rink with a smile on his face every every day to come to work and uh, obviously it transitions into games, and uh, we love having them, and it's awesome seeing him having success. Is there, or, or can you think of any other times, that making that switch from forward back to playing defense, have you seen anyone do it and be able to do it with as much success and comfort as Yuri has? Uh, probably not over the years. I'm coaching it, just trying to think. I don't know, I kind of put me on the spot on that one, but... Um, it's one of those things that transitions very well. When you can see the ice and you got a high hockey IQ like Yuri, it, uh, everything comes pretty easy for you. Uh, and so to get into kind of the first part of the weekend, that New Year's Eve game, scoring the first goal, obviously important in the game. Gus Ford scores less than two minutes into the hockey game, and it was kind of a fluky goal, but just the way he's been playing as of late, it seems that everything goes in, and so two minutes into the game, Gus Ford's got the team off and running, and just how much of a momentum swing is that right off the hop? Oh, absolutely. You always want to get out to a lead right first off, so like I said, it's never a bad thing throwing pucks to the net. Uh, I think Jacob Schnapp was driving the net there and causing traffic, and obviously uh, Frankie might have took his eye off it a bit there for Dan Barry's goalie, and then it ends up in the net, so finally we're starting to get some break around the net and, and the guys are working well so um, I'm happy with our starts as of late so and um, like I said if you can be out in the driver's seat early on in the game generally speaking uh, you got a good chance to win the game. Devin Warfield would follow up just a few minutes later uh, making it a 2 nothing game and that seemed to be that New Year's Eve game in particular that, that seemed to be a game in which kind of the depth scoring there was contributions from all over the lineup it wasn't just the same guys it wasn't just Gus Ford, John Batita, the top line everybody was chipping in and, and when you can get a guy back in the lineup scoring right away uh, again that's that's got to be a huge boost to see line uh, to see goals from coming all over the lineup. Oh yeah absolutely when you can get uh, the scoring from all over the sc or the game sheet basically is awesome. So even Moorfield's back in the, like back now, and he's been with us for probably a month or so. So you can start to see his stride starting to uh, catch up to where his skill level is. So it's nice to see uh, him getting some success and and everybody else in the lineup. He and Jacob Schnapp kind of snapped a, a couple of games of, of a scoring drought, getting back in the lineup that game. Uh, a pair of Danbury goals later in that first period would knock things up, heading back into the dressing room. But what was the feeling again? Out to a 2 nothing lead, all of a sudden it's erased. You're even heading into the second period. What was the feeling going into the locker room at that point in the weekend? Well, I felt we're all good. It's just sometimes we're our worst enemy. I think everybody can see that. Uh, we make some crucial mistakes in, in, in the defensive zone, and we kind of get uh, playing too much offense at times. So um, I preach a lot of take care of the defensive zone, and the offense will come. So when we're playing the right way, you can see the results. And it, like I said, it's building every game, and I've said this pretty much the whole season to you. So... Um, we just stay the course. We're a confident group, and once we get our lines together, obviously you can see we can score some goals. And that was the case in that second period. Four goals there, Jacob Schnapp, Blake, Peavy, 
Dawson Baker and Devin Warfield again. And, and Dawson Baker, another one of those players, you talked about Devin Warfield getting more and more comfortable as time goes on. Dawson Baker seems to be another perfect example of that. Oh, yeah, he's always in good ice. He's just he's played at a high level. Like, he's another kid that played in the Ontario Hockey League. So, um, just that league, you got to be in position, always your feet moving. And whenever you're moving your feet, it always puts you in good ice and around the puck. Do you think it was, and, and again, it's obviously going to be a transition moving from, from that style of play to this style, but what do you think is the most challenging part about going from an OHL game to an FPHL game? Um, I just think, like, Dawson's a younger guy, too, so you're playing against uh, some older guys in the league, bigger guys and stuff. Um, I don't think there's that much of a transition to it. Hockey's hockey to me. Like I said, you just you need to be positionally sound, moving pucks east, west, north, south to your line mates, and whenever you're moving your feet, you're going to be around the puck in good position. So he's got high, high hockey IQ, and uh, like I said, he's a good player, and he transitions very well into our game. When you do score four goals in a period like that, the goals coming in bunches like that, how do you kind of manage things on the bench? Because you did say, you know, sometimes the offense kind of gets ahead of itself and the defense isn't looked after. That was kind of the best of both worlds there. Four goals in that period, and the defense looked after itself. What was kind of the conversation there to make sure that one end didn't get forgotten? You just uh, you keep telling them to play the right way, and you keep rolling them out as quick as possible. So once they get going, even if it's uh, Peavy's line or Ford's line, Baker's line, you can tend to, uh, once they're feeling it, you start using them a little bit more, and maybe you change them up, or you put them right back out there when they come off. So, And then, uh, like I said, again, just playing the right way and taking care of defensive zone. and clean breakouts and coming to the neutral zone you're hard to stop final score there six to three finishing out 2021 with a win uh and, and again it's it's a milestone in the year uh the new year's eve and it just did it feel like kind of closing the book on, on one chapter i know it felt a little strange kind of because it was the beginning of the weekend but yeah absolutely it was it's always fun to close things out like that and then even getting a win on the on the first day of the year so it's always great to get wins at home and that's that's what we strive for and yeah, it's it's fun to have a full roster. It's fun to be in a in a pretty packed barn here. So it was a uh, it was a good atmosphere Friday night. And obviously the, the celebration afterwards, uh, dropping the puck at center ice with the fans uh, as the clock hit midnight. It, it just kind of speaks to again part of that that uh, unique ho- hockey atmosphere. I think here. In oh yeah, Salem. absolutely. That's what hockey's all about. You uh, put the work in and have some fun afterwards, and and it's just good to be around our own fans. And like I said, to ring in the new year here in uh, Winston Salem was great. We'll take a quick break here on the Labatt Coaches Show, and on the other side of it, we'll continue to break down a successful weekend for the Thunderbirds against Danbury. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Welcome back to the Labatt Coaches Show. Dylan Clark with Garrett Rutledge again. And coach, as we continue to break down uh, this weekend against Danbury, a very similar game Saturday night or Saturday evening uh, that we saw on Friday. Again, less than two minutes in, or a pair of goals early on for you guys. And it just... Again, the same thing. When you can get out to that two nothing lead for the second consecutive game, is it tough to not fall into that same mindset and almost get lulled to sleep? Like, all right, here we go. Same story, different day. Yeah, kind of, sort of. But it's it, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, if you jump out to a lead, you can also it can be the worst lead in hockey to have. So, um, Danbury's a good hockey team, so you got to play the right way and, and stick to the game plan. But it's also fun to be in control and getting those goals and stuff and getting the crowd into it early. So then Danbury's got to play. Uh, catch up for us so um, just as long as the guys are playing the right way and you keep putting shots on net and sticking to our game plan usually we're going to be all right four on four had been a kind of a, a a level of play or a scenario of play that had kind of been troublesome uh, over the last little while for you guys but Cody Oaks able to use it to his advantage um, a coast to coast goal that we're not entirely used to seeing um, and, and when you see a player with that kind of swagger and able to turn the Jets on like that and be rewarded for it uh, I mean, it's got to feel good to see that kind of play go in for that kid. Yeah, absolutely. When Cody wants to play, it's certainly uh, he's got game-breaking speed for sure. Um, he grabs the puck. It's fun to watch his long hair blowing in the wind there. So, um, like I said, if you got a bad gap on Cody, you're in a whole lot of trouble. He's got so much speed coming at you, and it was fun to see him get some success. And obviously a local kid at home uh, and the way he skates is always fun to watch. 
when things get set up four on four like that, is it kind of almost again the same thing? You don't you don't want to get ahead of yourselves because the natural thought I think is okay, more ice, more freedom to move around. And do you think guys kind of get away from a, a good style of play there? Um, it's just basically puck possession. You want to start with the puck, so whenever you have the puck, um, four on four, it, it just creates more space out there, and we're playing roller hockey style, kind of man on man. So. Um, dropping it back, coming out of the zone, and, and creating speed with speed all together. So it's one of those things, our guys, we do actually practice it quite a bit. So hopefully we're getting a little bit better at it. And John Batita in that game, a pair of assists, puts him at 100 points in his FPHL career. Um, one of the more vocal guys in the locker room as the, the months and the weeks have gone on, and now the C on his sweater. Um, can you just talk about kind of what, what went into that decision to make him uh, the captain? Oh, if anybody, if anybody knows Batita, he's just one of those guys. He just oozes confidence. He oozes just leadership. So having him in the dressing room has been amazing. Um, he was one of our assistant captains beforehand. Obviously, Joe Cangelosi had to step away for family issues and stuff, and, and Joe will be back eventually. Um, most of the decision of having Boots as a captain is just everybody looks at him kind of as a father figure in there. He's been around the league a long time. He's got lots of experience, and Boots brings just about everything you need as a hockey player from toughness to skill to, to blocking shots to just leadership to whenever you need a helping hand as a hockey player, you look at John Batia. So uh, having Boots naming him the captain was kind of one of those things that was kind of a no-brainer. So I'm sure uh, uh, Joe obviously supported the idea. And when Joe gets back, I just want him to come into the dressing room and just worry about playing hockey and, and do uh, Joe Cangelosi things. And we can't wait to have him back, obviously. When Joe comes back, he's still going to be our captain, maybe not on the ice because I just want him to focus on, uh, on, on ice stuff and enjoying the game of hockey. So Boots has done a great job so far, and uh, it's an honor to have him as a captain. Do you, do you think that putting that C on there, it, it didn't change the way he approaches the game or approaches the guys in the locker room at all, does it? No, 100%. It didn't change anything. It doesn't change anything for even Joe Cangelosi. He's still uh, the captain of our team when he comes back, and he's got a strong voice too. So we've got an older group in there with Cameron Dimmitt and guys like Gus Ford that's even younger. But Dawson Baker's been around some good hockey players. Like There's a bunch of guys that played a lot of hockey in there. So it's all hands on deck when it comes to leadership. And Evan Morrison in that game, as we get to kind of the younger end of things, uh, he's been put into a unique situation, played the last and started the last four games in a row, including all three this weekend. Um, but New Year's Day was probably his strongest appearance uh, of the weekend, 25 saves on 27 shots. And just what can you say about a goaltender that comes into a situation like that and performs at a high level? Yeah, it's one of those things. He goes into Delaware, and we kind of struggled that night. Just even as a team, we didn't have much of a warm-up and stuff like that got in late with a little bit of bus issues but um he's feeling it right now and the boys are, are playing great in front of him and, and mo's got some confidence each game you can see him getting more comfortable in the net so it's fun to watch a guy have success and, and win in hockey games so uh mo's one of those happy go lucky guys which is great to have for a goalie he doesn't get too rattled when he gets scored on it's kind of water on a duck's back mentality and he's on to the next one so it's fun to see him in there battling and winning games for us. Right. And, and it was fun to see on that, I believe it was that, that bus ride up to Delaware, he had the laptop open the whole, the whole ride, and he was making the, uh, the warm-up mixes in, uh, in GarageBand on his computer. And I think they actually ended up playing it here. Yeah. So DJ on the team, Evan Morrison, off to a pretty good start. He's a jack-of-all-trades, isn't he? <laughs> And so, um, again, as we continue through, and one more thing before we leave off on New Year's Day, we had um, another Mo, Nick Modica, as a guest on the broadcast that day. And uh, he said before he went up that, you know, there was a bit of a conversation uh, as to um, how he was going to be interviewed in his interview style because uh, you know Mo, and you know he's uh, one of the, he's not exactly a quiet person. But as he got up there and, and as we went through that, uh, that intermission report, he was a little more dialed back and reserved. And I just wanted to ask you if you may have had a hand in that approach to uh, the interview. I had no idea he even did an interview, to be honest with you. So that's uh, maybe Nick Modica trying to be professional coach here. So I, I don't know. I have nothing to elaborate on that one. <laughs> All right. So as we get into Sunday, again, uh, uh, two wins on the weekend to that point. Again, 6-3 uh, to three and then 6-2. to two. And Sunday, the good feelings probably continued, though. Um, that was the first time in the weekend that Danbury gave up, or Danbury scored the first goal. Tim Perks, three goals and two assists for five points on the weekend. A unique situation for him coming in. But as you surrender that first goal for the first time, the panic button wasn't being hit, was it? 
No, absolutely. Like I said, we always stick to our game plan. I still thought we carried the game on Sunday there. Uh, a guy like Tim Perks comes in the lineup. Again, he's played in the league a long time. Uh, I think he's working somewhere in Michigan. But like I said, you can get chemistry with a line mate pretty quick, and, and it just happens he's a good shooter. He hangs around the net. He knows where goals are scored, and, and those things drop on your stick, and you get good bounces. So um, as far as them scoring the first goal, no, you just keep plugging on here. Three unanswered goals um, after that, and just later in the game, things would go on. Kind of a back-and-forth game. It's kind of a, a, a toss-up at that point. And at that point in the weekend, the fatigue has certainly probably set in, especially for these guys. That was their fourth game in five days. And just as time goes on and as the game kind of gets down to the end of it there, late goal scored by Dan Barry, um, 21 seconds left in the game, and all of a sudden you're going to overtime. Uh, did it almost feel like the air kind of got sucked out of the building at that point? Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of. Like I said, our guys just got to learn how to manage a hockey game. When we, the goalies pulled and they got the extra attacker, you got to protect the house. We made a, a vital mistake in front of our net, and uh, someone got puck watching. So, But, it's again, it's all a learning curve, and like I said, once you get to overtime, it's one of those things we got a great chance to score, and the, and the guy ended up blocking, I think, with his chest or whatever. It's basically in the net. I think it was John Batista maybe they had a good chance down there and they come back down the score um, that's kind of one of the things but just near the end of the game like we just got to lock it down and like I said yeah it could be fatigue and stuff like that but but with that being said that's really not an excuse for us uh, we needed to lock that game down for sure right right but still a after you know a couple of days and that weekend is uh, firmly in the books again seven out of a nine possible points it's not a perfect weekend but it it's a weekend that you're most likely proud of looking. Yeah, back. I'm proud of it. Just it upsets me though because you're basically 21 seconds away from having a three wins. So as a coach, you kind of think to yourself like, oh, you can call it fatigue, you can call it whatever, right? But it's like we're 21 seconds away from having three wins instead of two wins. So as a coach, I'll always be unhappy about uh, basically that result. But of course, I'm I'm looking forward and I, I'm proud of the boys for getting two out of three wins for sure at home. So. Uh, like I said, we just keep moving forward and look forward to Watertown this weekend. All right. We're going to take one more quick break, and when we come back, we'll get into that Watertown weekend and what to expect coming up here in the Thunderbird schedule. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 12 seats or more, tickets start at just $12 a person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Thunderbirds. Call 336-748-3949 today. Welcome in one final time to the Labatt Coaches Show. Dylan Clark with Garrett Rutledge here from Winston-Salem. And Coach, again, uh, weekend against Danbury in the books. Watertown is now the target. And the second time that you'll have seen the Watertown Wolves this season, but it's a very different roster um, than you had against them in early November. Only eight skaters uh, that played on the 5th and 6th against Watertown are currently on the roster now. So as you try to evaluate and see what's kind of to expect this weekend, um, you've got a lot of different players and a lot more skill and a lot more scoring heading into this weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody's lineup's changed quite a bit, so it doesn't matter if it's Columbus River Dragons, us, Danbury. I, I feel like every team's out in here. Every team's getting better week by week, so it'll be it'll be fun to go into a, a tough environment, a tough building to play in. I haven't been there personally, so I'm looking forward to getting there and, and looking forward to the challenge. It's always fun to uh, go into the first place building kind of thing and, and see what we got here so how far uh, the Thunderbirds match up against the uh, Wolves. What have you seen just from watching game film it, it, the, the way Watertown plays it seems to be just a little bit above uh, some of the other things we've seen and just what has led to so much success for them over the last little well, they while? Got a, they, again it's just a veteran group they got a highly skilled group um, they play well together like I, I know their coach pretty well from Ontario there and, and like I said it's it's just breeds success it breeds like confidence and stuff so when you get a team playing together they throw pucks at the net they hang around the net they know how to win so and then like I said it's a it's it's a tough building to play in so I've told so I, I don't know what to expect to be honest with you so we'll be uh, watching game film we'll get the team prepared here and uh, again we'll concentrate on what the Thunderbirds do best all right, Garrett as always thanks so much for the time that'll just about wrap things up for us here on the Labatt Coaches Show. we'll see you next time